symbolic artificial intelligence it has a long tradition because it goes at least back to the very first piece of software ever written. It was not exactly software because it didn't have computers, but it was a step-by-step -step mechanical recipe. So it was an algorithm and therefore is software. It's called the syllogism. And the syllogism invented by Aristotle was a hit for 2,500 years. Kant thought the syllogism was the main, one of the main examples of synthetic a priori truths, just up there with Newton's theories and Euclidean geometry, meaning he thought it was a big deal, a huge deal. Hegel, who came after uh, Kant, but it is part of the same German tradition, also has an entire chapter on the syllogism. So the syllogism was a huge deal up to the advent of computers. Here's an example of the syllogism. All humans are mortal. Socrates is human. That's the input to the algorithm. You feed it these two sentences as an input. And the syllogism will automatically give you, as an output, Socrates is mortal. Now, I'm sure that you're thinking right now, really, you know, wow, what a shocker, right? Socrates is mortal was already in, implied in there, so it's not that this was a big deal. It doesn't look like a big deal because I only have two premises. But now imagine this thing with 30 premises and try to keep them all in your head and try to keep and try to come up with the right response after after you hear 30 sentences, you're gonna give me the conclusion. You can't do that. The syllogism can. So it is an algorithm, it's a mechanical recipe that moves truth and falsity from general sentences to particular sentences. That's what deductive logic in general is. And symbolic artificial intelligence is partly based on deductive logic. Deductive logic is a set of mechanical recipes to move truth and falsity from general sentences to particular sentences. So when, when Aristotle wrote the syllogism, he was already writing a little piece of artificial intelligence. He invented deductive logic, that is, he formalized it and gave us the first little piece of software that actually works mechanically and infallibly. So that's deductive logic. Artificial intelligence is basically representations. It uses representations, linguistic or otherwise. and manipulates it, manipulates them via or through logical rules. Now we just saw one type of logic, deductive logic. It moves truth from the general to the particular. There's another type of this actually right back there. Truth and falsity, right? I just don't want to be writing that over and over again. From general to the particular. Now, a more interesting form of logic is called inductive logic, and that moves it. treasure, huge treasure, and 
you're comparing jewels. I don't even know why I use this example, but because most people haven't been pirates, so they don't really have any experience with this. So you go, this emerald is green, the particular sentence which is true. This other emerald is green. This other emerald is green. All emeralds are green. That's an example of inductive logic. You take several particular cases, and then you move true from this is true, this is true, this is true. All emeralds are green, which you don't know. But you have enough samples that you can tell, yes, it is true. Or, this ruby is red. This other ruby is red. This other ruby is red. All rubies are red. Or, and to switch to an example not involving jewels, this chihuahua dog is obnoxious. <laughs> this other chihuahua dog is obnoxious. That chihuahua dog is obnoxious. All chihuahua dogs are obnoxious. Now talk about your ultimate truth. Huh? Now you can, I cannot even imagine how you would begin to disprove that one. Now, same thing, different direction. This was given an algorithm, an infallible mechanical recipe 2,500 years ago. This one still doesn't have an infallible mechanical recipe. Why? Because it's much harder to move truth from particulars to generals. In, in, in fact, if you can write an algorithm that mechanically and infallibly moves truth from particular to generals, you have invented a program that learns from experience. Because that's what it is. From experience, I know this, this jewel is green. From experience, I know this other emerald is green. From experience, I know some emerald. All emeralds are green. Now you have generalized from your particular experiences. It cannot be anything more Kantian than that. So in order for us to meet the Kantian paradigm, we need to solve the problem of inductive logic. We haven't yet. The closest that artificial intelligence has come to do that is via all <coughs> expert system. Although in the 1950s, they made great attempts. This was, by the way, at the Rand Corporation. We mentioned the Rand Corporation, they filed before it, but at the same tank. At the Rand Corporation, this guy called Herbert Simon, a very clever guy who has done both economics and, and artificial intelligence and has his hands on just about everything. He created something called a theorem prover. Now, Theorems are things that you derive from axioms. Let's, let's think of Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry has a few axioms, a, a few truths that are self-evident. And from those self-evident truths that you cannot, and you don't have to prove because they are self-evident, you can derive many theorems deductively. The axioms are general, the theorems are particular. <coughs> so, but if, if within an axiomatic system, like say Euclidean geometry, you can then take a theorem and prove that it follows from a general a, a, a axiom, then you have done a little bit of an inductive logic. It's, it's a very constrained form of inductive logic because it only allows you to learn within that system of axioms, but nevertheless you move truth from particulars to generals. You move truth from theorems to axioms. Uh, that's called a theorem prover. And, and, and the first one, the first successful one, was designed in the late 50s by Herbert Simon at the Rand Corporation. Despite that, people in the artificial intelligence community realize this is not going to fly. There may not be general algorithms for inductive logic outside of axiomatic systems. You know, inductive logic may not be a matter of algorithms, but a matter of heuristics. which is just a fancy word for rules of thumb. That is informal rules that tell you what to do in certain situations but are not generally applicable. So heuristics, unlike algorithms, are not always right. You know, when an algorithm, we, we were taught an algorithm, we, we were taught how to multiply numbers like this, 23 by 46, as kids. 
The very first thing they did is they crammed into our heads the multiplication tables. We were all us kids had to be repeating. Two by two is four. Two by three is six. Two by four is eight, right? And it was by repetition, we eventually learned how to say those numbers over and over and over again. That is similar to, to doing a transfer of data into your head. You just don't have the means to download things into your head, but if we could, you could do different things. If you would download with the multiplication tables, because instead of having to memorize them by rot. But after that, they show you a mechanical recipe. First, take the right side number, multiply it, it's 18, you carry a number, that's 13. Then take the second number and move it over one, that's 12, that's 9 if you carry the number, and then add the numbers. That's, that's a step-by-step -step recipe that we learn as kids, and that's an algorithm. So algorithms don't necessarily have to run on computers. It can be any mechanical recipe that's infallible. As long as you follow that recipe step-by-step, -step, even if you don't understand why you follow it, it will give you the right result. But many things we do in life are not infallible recipes. They're recipes. But they are basically informal rules. They work in this case, maybe if I alter them a little, they will work in another case. So, artificial intelligence, people decided to try to build inductive logic via heuristics. But where do you get the heuristics? Well, you get them from actual experts. So what they did is to cheat. They invited, this is in the 1960s, the first two expert systems where one that had to do with medicine. It was how to diagnose within a very narrow range of diseases, diseases by their symptoms. That is a kind of inductive logic. A patient comes to you and says, I have a runny nose, I have a slightly high fever, I have a, you know, and he gives you a list of, 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 of so then you go from that particular case to all the particular cases that you've seen and you go, you have the flu. You belong in the general category flu, or if you want to put it this way, the patient has runny nose, the patient has a uh, uh, slight fever, the patient uh, sneezes a lot. There's a bunch of particular truths. The patient has the flu as a general truth. You know, as the, the patient belongs to the category people with flu. So diagnosing diseases is an example of inductive logic. So what expert system did is hire an actual doctor and try to extract from that doctor, try to force him to verbalize his know-how. Doctors normally learn how to diagnose. They don't really learn it in a book. It's a skill. And like with all skills, it's typically one verbalized. We already talked about that. But you can force him to verbalize. You put him in front of a bunch of video cameras, a bunch of tape recorders, someone called a knowledge engineer is there with a questionnaire and saying, okay, I'm going to present you with some symptoms, I want you to classify them. Yes, this is easy, this is a yellow fever. But what, what steps did you go through to, to, to do that? I don't know, I'm a doctor. Well, try to verbalize them. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to put your mind inside a computer and it's going to be an eternal being. Oh, okay, okay. So then you finally extract the heuristics from the doctor. It's a painful process, it takes weeks to do that. And you end up with a bunch of sentences that are like this. If, then, else, and a bunch of if, then, else sentences, which all together are, are called a knowledge base. And they codify the informal knowledge, the informal heuristics of an actual doctor. And then using these heuristics, then you get the computer, you test the computer with a bunch of symptoms. This guy came with his symptoms, what disease does it have? The computer almost always get it right. Expert systems work. If you go to the artificial intelligence section of your library or artificial intelligence section of, of, any, of, of your bookstore, you're going to find several volumes on expert systems because they're still developing. They actually work. They perform inductive logic, but in very narrow fields. So they are more like idiot savants than they are general intelligent people. In other words, an expert system knows about medicine in a few diseases, but they ask them about architecture, ask them about engineering, and they don't want to know anything. So they are more like super specialized idiot savants. But within their field, they work. And so this is as close as to molecular artificial intelligence as gotten to 
deciphering the mystery of inductive logic. 